Okay, we're going to look at uh, section 4.1. We're going to define something called the determinant. And we're going to look at some of the properties of this thing, the determinant. Our basic goal here is to look at the determinant as something that tells us whether or not the inverse of a matrix exists. So we'll go over the goals, um, expectations for this. We'll define something called the determinant. And it'll be for a 2 by 2 matrix. We'll look at some of the properties of the determinant and we'll look at some special cases and then we'll do some more properties of the determinant and then we're going to look at something new called the transpose. All right, so by the end of this you should be able to calculate the determinant of a square matrix. Uh, you should be able to uh, take the determinant and of a matrix and then determine whether or not an inverse exists for the matrix. You should be able to find the determinant for the product of two matrices or more and determine the um, determinant of some special cases we're going to define called for diagonal matrices. And finally, you should be able to work with a transpose of a matrix. All right, first thing I'm going to do is uh, just look at what happens here if I have a system of two equations, two unknowns. And before I solve this, I'm just, I'm not going to ask what the values are. I'm going to ask whether or not I can even solve it. So here's what I'm going to do. is I'm going to try to figure out a way to multiply the first row or the first equation by something clever, the second equation by something clever, so that when I subtract them, the y's will drop out. And so here's the thing to notice. I've got a 4 there. So if I multiply everything in the top row by 4, and I've got a 2 there. So if I multiply everything in the second row by 2, when I go to subtract, because I've got 4 times 2 and 4 times 2, this is going to drop out. So what happens? Uh, let me go ahead and multiply this out. So if I multiply this out, so i got 4 times that row, 2 times that row. So 4 times that row, minus 2 times that row, and then just keep track of the baggage here. What do I get? I'm going to get... 4 times 3 times x plus 4 times 2 times y when I multiply that through. And I'm going to multiply that 2 through. So I'm going to have 2 times 8 times x plus 2 times 4 times y. And this is going to be 28 minus 20. So the 4 times 2 times y minus 2 times 4 times y, that's going to drop out and be 0. So I'm going to have 4 times 3 times x minus 2 times 8 times x equals 8. And let me factor out the x. So I have that. So I'm going to have whatever this is, and I can solve this. Now note here that this is going to be, what, 12 minus 16 or minus 4. Because that's not 0, I can solve this for x. So I can immediately look at this and say, since that is not 0, I can solve this for x and an inverse must exist for this thing. Let's look at this as a matrix. And I'm going to ask, what is the 4 times 3? So I have 4 times 3 I have 2 times 8. So if I take 3 times 4 minus 2 times 8, because that's not 0, that means then that I can invert this system and work with it. Okay, so let's ask, does this work in general? So I'm going to do the same thing. I have ax plus by, and this is just some number. I don't care. cx plus dy, some number. My only question here is, does an inverse exist? I'm not, I don't care yet what it is. So, and the reason is, is before I go looking for it, I want to know if it's there. So let's see. So I've got a D there and a B there. Let me multiply everything by D on the first row. And then in the second row, let me multiply everything by B. So that way, if I subtract, I know I'm going to have a d times b times y minus a b times d times y. I know the y's are going to drop out, and I'm left only with x's. So I 
multiply through by that D, multiply through by the B, and I subtract. So this term is there, this term is there, and then whatever I get, I don't care. So let me multiply through. I'm going to have D times A times X plus D times B times Y minus B times C times X from there. And then I'm going to have minus B times D times Y. And that's going to equal some number. And then by design, those things are the same. When I subtract, they cancel out. I'm going to have D times A times X minus B times C times X equals some number. And let me factor out the X. So instead of B D times A, I'm going to write this as A times D, because that's what your book does. And I get that. If this is not zero, that means that no matter what number I have there, I have a solution and I can always solve this. Right, because I can then go back and plug in my value for x in either this equation or this equation and solve for y, which is saying that the inverse exists. So if I think about this in terms of my matrix, I've got the column AC, column BD, so that's what this thing looks like as a matrix. I go down that column or down that diagonal, A times D. Now, if I go in this direction, minus B times C, so the question here is does this quantity right there, AD minus BC, equal zero? If AD minus BC equals zero, I cannot invert this system. And I cannot tell you that a unique solution exists. And that means that if I constructed this with, and was expecting that a unique solution would exist and that this is invertible, something went wrong somewhere. Either I was wrong that it, this should be invertible, or I made a mistake somewhere else. So this quantity AD minus BC gives us a lot of information about what's going on here before we do anything. And we're going to define this for a 2 by 2 matrix. And we're going to call this the determinant of this matrix A. It's going to be AD minus BC. So that's just a definition. And the whole purpose of this is to tell us whether or not this inverse exists. Okay. Turns out there's another way to interpret this. I'm going to look at a geometric way uh, to interpret this thing. So what did we have? We had that if we take AC, BD, and the determinant of this thing we define to be AD minus BC. And again, if this is zero, that means the inverse does not exist and uh, there's no point looking for it. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so now what's going on here? If I have two vectors, and this one has an angle theta from the x-axis, this has an angle psi from the x-axis. If I form a trapezoid by taking a line parallel to that vector, taking a line parallel to that vector. If I look at this area, it's going to turn out that that area is equal to that. Okay, And so what are we going to be working with here? That area, if I make an, oops, make an angle straight down here, so that's a right angle, I'm going to say, let's assume that, so this is my vector u, this is my vector v. Suppose this has length l and this has some length m. And the area is going to be the base, which is l, times this vertical height, which is going to be m, times the sine of this angle right here, which is psi minus theta. So the area of that thing is going to be that. And notice if the area is 0, what does that mean? That means that my u and my v are basically in the same direction. So if those two vectors are in the same direction, then this trapezoid is going to have 0 uh, area. OK, 
Okay, so again, if this area is zero, an inverse for this thing is not gonna exist because these two vectors are linearly dependent. So the question now is, is this equal to that? So let's take a look. So what I said this is u, it's gonna have length l, this is v and has length m, and the area that I'm looking for is lm times sine of psi minus theta. And I wanna know, is that equal to ad minus bc? Right? That's coming from ad minus bc. So let's see, I'm going to need the angle sum formula. So this is gonna be L times M, sine of psi minus theta is gonna be sine of psi, cosine of theta, minus cosine of psi, sine of theta. And, okay, what are these things? Let's see. So if I look at this triangle right here, this is my vector u. The base is going to be A, the height is C. If I look at this, this has angle psi. So let's see, the base is B and the height is D. So now we're just going to plug in. So I'm going to have L times M times sine of psi. Sine of psi is going to be D over M. Cosine of theta is going to be A over L, right? This length is L, like this M. Cosine of psi is going to be B over M. And sine of theta is going to be C over L. If I multiply this LM through, it's going to cancel with this and this, and this and this. So I'm going to get DA minus BC, and if I write this as AD, lo and behold, that's going to be the determinant of this matrix AC, BD. Okay? So there's two ways to think about this. One is the algebraic way where if we go through and we try to solve AX plus BY equals something, CX plus DY equals something, then we get this expression. The other way is to think about this area between the trapezoid, and they're both the same things. Either way, what we do is we get that if the determinant of the matrix is zero, it's not an invertible matrix. All right, so let's look at this situation here. So I can just immediately look at this, and I can ask, does a unique solution exist? And if so, then I can go through and try to find it. So if I take the determinant of this matrix, so this is 2 minus 1, 2, 4. I'm going to go 2 times 4. Let me clean that up. So that's 2 times 4 minus, and go across here, 2 times minus 1. So I'm going to have 8 minus and minus 2 is 10. <coughs> So this is invertible. So A inverse exists where A is equal to 2 minus 1, 2, 4. A unique solution exists to this. And now I've got my license to go out and try to find it. Suppose I have this system instead. So what's going on here? Um, Suppose I have this system instead. Sorry about that. So my matrix A now, so going from that column is 3 minus 6. That column is 2 minus 4. So you should look at this and notice that if I divide this by 3, I'm going to have what? 1 minus 2. If I divide that by 2, I'm going to have 2. Oops, sorry. 1 minus 2. So these two vectors are pointing in the same direction and they're linearly dependent, so there's no way that I can have an inverse. Okay. Can I verify that? So let's take the determinant of this thing. So it's going to be 3 times minus 4, going that direction. 
minus, going that direction, 2 times minus 6. So I have minus 12 minus a minus 12 is 0. So the determinant of a is 0. So it's not an invertible, and there's no a inverse. So there's not a unique solution to this. And so if I was looking to find a unique solution to this, I can just stop now and say it's game over.